In this video, we'll learn how to install and organize macros, which are a series of recorded steps that you can play with the click of a button. To practice working with macros, I've left a download link in the video description for three example macros, along with the photo I'm using. The first thing we need to do is open the library panel, which we can do by coming to view, Studio, and Library. The library panel is where all of our macros are stored. To import more macros into the library, just open this menu, and then press Import Macros. Then you can import any macro files you have on your computer. Now the macros have been imported into our library. This means that the macros are now a part of the Affinity Photo app, so you can actually delete the macro file from off your computer. Every time you open Affinity Photo, the macros will still be safely stored in the library panel. To play a macro, all you need to do is click on it. For the macros I've linked to underneath this video, each one will create a group at the top of your layers panel, which can be turned on and off. These certainly aren't the best macros in the world, <laughs> but they should give you an idea of what macros are capable of. Over time, you might accumulate quite a few macros, so I also want to teach you how to keep your library panel clean and organized. First, you can rename any of the macros by right-clicking on them. This is also where you can delete the macro if you no longer want it. It's a good idea to name your macros something that you can remember, because at the bottom of the library, you can search for any macro by its name. As you might have noticed, all of our macros are inside of a group. These groups are called categories. Affinity comes with a category of default macros, and if you follow along with this video, you'll also have a category called Example Macros. If you'd like to rename this category to something more descriptive, you can do so by clicking on the Categories menu. This is also where you can delete the category along with all the macros inside of it. You can also export the macro category which will create a macros file. That's exactly what I did in order to share these example macros with you. The last thing you can do from this menu is move the entire category up or down. If I move it up, you can see that my example category is now above the default category. You can also rearrange the macros inside of each category by clicking and dragging. If you ever want to open or close a category, just press on the arrow next to it. Well, that concludes your introduction to macros. You now know how to install macros and keep your library panel organized. Thanks for watching, my friends. And I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.